Hi guys, I'm just trying to make sure that I load the volumes here and I'll tell you the story why I'm, you're gonna hear beeps. So give me one second, I just wanna make sure that I see you. Okay, you see the volumes here. Let's see that I can see you. Yes, hi guys. Yeah, now I can see you. I'm coming from my dining room table today because it's really sunny here in Toronto and I think it's better light and based on the last light, I've actually have bolted the lights down so we have no accidents. I have put you know, my pictures in cups so I won't lose them. So I have everything in place. I'm just trying to see where the volume is coming from. So, and I'll tell you the story why I'm going through all this because and I think it has to do with this phone. And you're gonna see me working with two phones today because um, I'll tell you the story while we're working. But I hope you guys are okay. I can't see your comments. I see Heather right now. Okay, so we're good. Um, we're gonna give it a few more times before, you know, a few more people show up and then we're gonna flip the camera and have some fun with some of the stuff that we I have on the table. I hope you're okay. Hi, Heather, I hope you're okay. Hope you guys are all doing okay. Like it's getting really cold here in Toronto, like really fallish. So we had a little bit of snow. Um, hi, Deborah, um, in certain parts of Ontario, which is normal for this time of the year, uh, but it is getting cold. So, um, you know, let's hope that, you know, we don't get ice during the weekend because I'm going to my nephew's communion. So, you know, I am hoping that everything is okay. And you see, hola, Susie. I am like, you know, reading all the people that I have here and Susie's here, she's in the design team, she's in Spain. So if you hear my Spanish coming out, it's because Susie's here. Hola, Susie. Um, so I hope you guys are okay. Um, I know they're a little bit behind and it's, uh, you know, just the email didn't go out to the subscribers and, you know, it's okay. We, you know, Leah's had a couple uh, hard days lately. So uh, she's taking some time off. So, you know, it's okay. She needs a time off right now. Um, so just, you know, be patient with us for a little bit there, but lots to talk about, lots to, you know, you know, to go through. And I'm just, you know, waiting, like I said, for a few more people. We're a little bit behind, but don't worry. I'm, I'm hoping that the project won't take that long. We're going to go with something really simple, but as always, flowery and soft and a different palette for fall, something a little bit softer and all about gratitude. Um, as our, you know, customers and followers from the U.S. are set up to go on to Thanksgiving this Thursday. So I thought that I'd create something that can help you with a car design or with everything. So um, before I go, so let me just make sure that I have everybody here. Uh, remember that a comment, you know, if you comment, you'll get a chance to win a gift certificate at the end of the uh, live. Heather will pick one from the attendees. And then um, I think I'm good. So I'm just gonna flip the camera and we'll talk more about, um, you know, the project and what's been going on with life. So let's flip the camera. Oh, there we go. It's working and you're gonna see two phones. And I'm gonna tell you the story because there's always phones, you know, like they have a shelf life and my phone, it's been coming to the point that it's dying really fast. So I told my husband I needed a second phone and, you know, thankfully he got a new, a good one for me. And, you know, I'm very thankful. I paid for it. Doesn't really matter. And, you know, I was like, okay, I am a little bit of phone challenge. Like, you know, technology is not, like it's good, but, you know, can be like as savvy as the teenagers. So one of the things that, um, oh, hi, Jennifer, that's okay. One of the things that they said is, oh, you can transfer all your data from one phone to, I was like, oh, that's great. But nobody told you that, Passwords don't get transferred. So it's been a day and I'm still trying to remember what passwords I have in the other phone so I can move paths. So it's been, you know, a little bit of a headache. So let's go back to the project. Remember uh, at the end of the show, well, at the end of the hour, Heather will pick a winner from the comments and you win a gift certificate to the shop. So let's get with the project. Today, we're gonna do something really simple, really fun. Uh, and I think it's great. It works great as a card, like the design. Uh, it works great in a lot of formats. But what, what we're gonna do it is gonna go with that really soft fall palette. And we're gonna use the best day collection. You're gonna see I have it here, whatever I have left over. I have some ephemera, some of the florals. 
Um, and we're gonna use actually this stamp set. This is the Lush Peonies uh, stamp set. And you're gonna see I've already ink ahead of time. So let me just move stuff. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put it here on my chair so I won't lose it because you guys know that I'm really good at losing stuff. If you've seen my shows before. So I've gone ahead and stamp the image onto um, white cardstock with uh, detailed black ink. So very, I just made it ahead of time. So, you know, the ink is dry and, you know, we don't have that much bleed when we start using the stencils, which is the way we're gonna color them. So I'm just putting the stuff away. So I'm from Malaysia or oh, Maryland. Oh my God, you see, that's how far, like the new phone has really tiny letters. So, you know, so what we're gonna use to uh, color, let's put the stuff away, is the stencil set. This is the Lush Peonies stencil set. Okay, again. Put everything in order here. And this is five stencils that actually, as you know, Pink Free Studio has a little notch. If you're going straight with a stencil in your image, you can go ahead and match it to the corner of your paper, and then you can create the image. But because I chose to stamp my image first with the black detailed ink, all I have to do now is just match the image to um, what I have already stamped on the page. So I have some washi tape, so I'm gonna put my arm on the way. Hello from, oh, California, nice. And I see, I think WI, is that Wichita? Wichita? Okay, I'm not good with American states because I live in Canada. So it's a little, and you know, you have a lot of states down there. So I don't wanna butcher where you're from, so I'm gonna say from the states. And that goes for uh, Kim and Sarah, and Sarah and Cindy. So all I'm gonna do right now is just use a little bit of washi tape to hold it in place. And I'm gonna show you what I, how I'm gonna color these flowers. And I'll tell you what colors I use after. Okay, so let's just get started with this. I'm gonna hold my paper down there. And like I said, I'm doing it this way because I stamped the image first. But if you're choosing to use the stencil first, all you have to do is match your cardstock to the notches on the stencil and it's perfect placement. And that's just gonna help you to work everything like, you know, all your stencils gonna line up easily. So just keep that in mind when you're creating your project. So let me just make sure it's all lined up. And I have my brushes here. You're gonna see cute, my little mug of brushes. And I have my ink. And I am gonna use, let me just find it here, the ones that I'm gonna use for today. Well, I use a different, I use different colors, but I'm going to show you this one here. And then, like I said, I'm going to talk to you about the color. Hello, Jennifer. So I'm going to start with peach and I'm going to bring a little bit of coral reef. So if I'm a peach brush here, peach brush, peach brush, I have it. So very simple. I'm using the peach fuzz um, premium, dark, uh, premium ink, dye ink. So I'm just going to collect some ink here. And then I'm going to go in a circular motion on top of the stencil just to add the color to the flowers. That's just going to cut. It's an easy way to color the flowers, especially like, you know, if you want to avoid water coloring. And uh, this is just an easy way, very simple. Again, just dab your brush. You can use a foam um, applicator too if you have that. And then just go in a circular motion on the stencil. The ink is going to be deposited in the empty spaces of the stencil and it's gonna color your flower. So I'm just gonna add, like, like I said, I'm using peach fuzz. I'm just adding color to my flowers. Very simple. I tend to start from the outside of the, of, not in the center of the flower, from the outside of the stencil. So kind of my ink gets deposited on the plastic and then I just drag it into the flower. That way I don't have like, you know, those harsh lines inside of the flowers. So I'm just gonna keep coloring and, very simple. This is very therapeutic, actually. You know, when you have, I don't, I don't know how car makers work about, like around it. Like if you do um, car making, like in mass production, then I find that like working with an stencil is like really easy to like, you know, create like a lot of cars in a sequence. But if you're just a scrapbooker and like, you know, one of the per like, not the perks, but I want to say um, one of the reasons why, you know, it takes a little bit more time is because you take, um, what's his name? You see, somebody's texting me. If I tell you who it is, you guys might know her. So I'm just going to lower the volume. 
but you know she's my friend so she's texting me because she's in there so it's just that if you're like i said if you're a car maker and you're mass producing cars then this is like an easy way to just you know create a lot of them at once and it's very therapeutic honestly because it's just kind of repetitive um you know work but if you're a scrapbooker then you know at the same time you're creating your embellishments for your layout and it just goes really fast and it's just you know it's a matter of having your colors having a couple brushes i'm gonna say it comes in handy so you've seen i've added all my peach color to the flowers but i want to give it a little bit more of the colors from the um the fall but in a really soft palette so i'm gonna add a little bit of coral reef so i'm gonna use the same brush Let's be crazy for a little bit, just a tiny bit. Again, outside in the plastic and I'm gonna drag the ink in, not a lot, just a little bit. I just wanna give it that shade. If you hit the banging, we are having, um, we have reno going on in our apartment building. We're changing all the walls are being changed, like the color, they are actually pulling out the carpets, we're changing the carpets. So if you're here, it's because they're doing some work. It's not that bad, today is a good day, you know, so. Sorry about that, out of my control. So you're gonna see that I'm just applying the ink and bringing a little bit of that color inside of the flowers. That's just gonna give it a little hint of that reddish tone, just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna lift it up so you see it, very soft. You're gonna see right now, okay? I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it higher so you can see. So you have, you have the peach and the little, like little bit of pink, that's all you want. So I'm gonna put my stencil aside for now. We'll have it, I'll clean it up after. Now for the scent, this one here creates the centers of the flowers and I think I flipped it. Yes. Okay. So for this, I'm gonna put this away so we're organized here. Pink go on the side, peach fuzz we're gonna need after. Get the yellow brush. And I use actually Sweet Master for the other colors. Um, and I'm going to show you how I went. I want the centers of the flowers to be like deeper in tone. So I'm just going to take some of the washi tape that I have here because it's handy. And I'm gonna, just to keep it in place. Um, it's very gentle. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. Remember, the more pressure you apply, the darker the tone of the ink you are depositing on your paper. So just keep that in mind. So again, this is Sweet Mustard. And I'm gonna start, I'm taking some of the, and I'm actually gonna go right in the center of the flowers, of the bigger flowers. Cause I want there to be like a little bit darker. So I'm not even going on the side, I'm going right on the center. And then whatever ink is left over, I'm gonna use it to color the flowers. So soft, like I said, the ink went right on the center and whatever's left over on the brush, I'm just using to color the rest of the flowers. And it's plenty, plenty of ink. You'd be surprised a little bit goes a long way when you're using your brush or like just um, kind of inking your flowers this way. It's gonna add a little bit more color here. Yeah, so I just want soft tones. Just here because I have the centers of the flowers, I'm gonna apply a little bit of a darker tone right here. Just this is like um, the stencils make it very easy for you to see where like the ink is deposited and where you add in the extra color. So like here at the centers of the flowers, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra ink, and then the rest I want really soft. So that's all we need. Put this away. We don't need any more yellow for now. So all my flowers have sweet mustard centers because you're gonna see I did a qu quite a few. I might not use all of them but they're ready. So I'm gonna bring it closer so you see it. I think you can see it there. So you see you have that peach with a little bit of pink and the yellow centers. So let's put that back and we're gonna come in with the third stencil. And here's where I change a bit of my flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my flowers so you see them. I worked ahead, like I said, doesn't mean that I'm gonna use all of them. So let me just use the two peach ones that I created and I'll talk to you about the pink after. So here's my peach. This one has um, the same way that I started, peach fuzz with a little bit of uh, coral reef in the base. And then I went with apricot on top. You can see it, okay? This one here has 
peach fuzz at the bottom with a little bit of coral reef. And I went with actually a little bit of a really soft um, passion fruit on top. So it has that tone of reddish. I hope you can see it. So I just like the, it makes a little bit like this one is more of a natural tra uh, transition of color. This one, there's a little bit more of like um, an accent on the colors. So um, I don't know. I just wanted to have different options. Like I said, we might not use all of them. I think we're going to use at least two or three. And I also created some pink ones. Again, this is pink on pink. So this is ballet slipper with, um, let me just pull them out quickly because I have them here. So this is ballet slippers with a little bit of sparkly rose. And then I went on top with a little bit of bubble gum. And this one here, it actually has, I have them already, has a little, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, has a little tinge of lilac. So this one has, again, ballet slipper at the bottom, a little bit of sparkling rose, and then I went softly with soft lilac to add the detail. So you can see it, but it has more of a blue tinge to that. So I play with the ink colors, and I'm gonna show you right now how this goes. So let me put my flowers again on the side. So I'm gonna play with the apricot and you're gonna see how I did it because I like to play with ink sometimes to see what I get. So apricot here. And then I am gonna bring a little bit, remember I have coral reef on the background. So these are my two colors. Let's use the, let's use the brush for the peach bus. So again, I'm gonna just a little bit of washi tape, which is, is what I have at hand right now, just to keep it in place. I just wanna mix the inks in a nice kind of organic way. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of the apricot. Again, outside in the plastic and then move it into the flower, circular motion. Okay, so a little bit here, very soft. You don't have to go hard. If you go harder with the brush, if you add more pressure, then you, the ink is gonna get darker. So just keep that in mind. You can control the amount of color you deposit on your flowers. And then I wanna pick up a little bit of coral reef and then just go on top of it. So I'm applying a little bit of extra pressure. I just want the color combination. You see that I'm not cleaning my brush or switching brushes. I just wanna kind of create that contrast. And then here in the center of the flower, I'm actually gonna add more pressure here. I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna repeat with the other one. Since I already have ink, so I'm gonna a little bit here, circular motion. And that's how I created pretty much all my flowers. Like I played with the colors, I mix them together. Um, it just, it still has the same tones, but it's just like um, the same color, just with wherever I use more red, has like a warmer tone. And where, for example, I use this one, the orange and the coral reef made more of an orange tone. The other one has more of a pink tone. So I just play with them. I just wanted like the same, um, the same colors, but in different tones. That's the best way to explain it. So I'm just trying to read at the same time that I'm like, you know, working your uh, comments. But I think Heather has you covered. So perfect. Thank you, Heather. So very simple. And I think I'm done with the inks here. So let me lift it up so you see. So I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna show you the difference. You can have it here. So this one is pretty much what it's gonna create when it dries. You see the tones of orange and uh, peach in them. But if you went with more of like, I think a passion fruit, you're gonna see the tones of red, kind of pinkish. So this, same color, just different tones. So that was the idea here. So let's just put this away because, you know, we want to avoid any accidents and forgetting where things are at. Get my brush, and we're going to go with the leaves. And the leaves are very simple, actually. Let me show you. I actually used for my leaves, let's put this away. I am using Ocean Breeze and Aquamarine. I wanted a lot like something more on the tealish look because the collection has a lot of teal in it. So I don't wanna go with green, but I'm gonna make it, um, what, what is the word I'm gonna use? I'm trying to think of the right word. Uh, fall, like a greenish fall. You're gonna see how we're gonna do that. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm, I'm listening to your comments a little bit here. Not listening, reading them. 
So yeah, if you, uh, the stencils are a great way to color your flowers, whether you're like a colorist, like, you know, you are a car maker and you like to color. And I think we all in a way or another like to color, especially if you like, you know, some sort of, um, what do you call it? Uh, like a coloring method that you're really good at it, then, you know, it works well. But in general, stencils are a great way to create, like I said, especially if you're mass producing flowers, it's an easy and fast way. So again, same method, I'm picking up a little bit of ocean breeze, going on a circular motion. I like to start right at the base of the leaf, kind of sweep the ink, then a circular motion. And then I pick up a little bit of aquamarine at the same time. Sweep it and then circular motion. I like creating my leaves like that. It just gives them a little bit of depth right at the base of the of it. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna just pick up the two colors and apply the ink. Just created a nice effect on the leaves, it's like kind of a medium tone in between the two colors. And that's okay for the leaves. If you choose, you can go with the greenish tones, like the mint tones. There's also um pink mint. This is the garden straw. It'll be perfect. It also matches the collection. But I wanted something a little bit more, um, what was the word? Kind of, um, it's not whimsical, but like a little bit more on the, I call it fairy colors. That's the best way that I'm gonna call them. Just because the picture that I'm documenting is my niece and my daughter. And um, my kids are older than my nieces, than my niece and my nephew by with, I think around eight or six years, but they adore my daughter. like they love her like you have no idea how much and they have like this crazy relationship so i have a few pictures of them together which is what we're going to document so i thought that you know i wanted the softer colors i wanted something more girly for it so i chose to go with aquamarine and ocean breeze for that so i'm just reading some comments and yeah these stencils are a great investment they're easy to clean especially if you're like you know continuously cleaning them they last a long time. Just gonna be careful when you, you know, when you clean that you don't damage it, but you can easily do it. And, um, you know, it's whether you have the stamp to actually add the detail or just, you know, color by itself, they work perfect. And if you have a foiling machine, like a hard foil machine, they're perfect. So I have my colors here, put this away. And, you know, I'm just gonna read some comments. I hope you guys are okay. I can't read that many comments like, there's a big comment. Let's see. I love coloring often, but it helps me unwind. Yeah, coloring helps you unwind, but stencils too. They work the same way. So you're going to see I have that nice tone. But to make it a little bit fallish, I'm going to flip it here. Just put it in place. And when you think of fall, you think of richer tones. You think of like, you know, a little bit of those cozy kind of brownish tones that you see on nature. So that's what we're gonna do. Ah, we're gonna add a little bit of brown to our flowers. Not to the flowers, sorry, to the leaves. I'm gonna use warm buff for that. This is one of the premium inks. And I have my brush with that. So just pick up a little bit of color so you can see it. And a circular motion. There you go. And I'm not going heavy with the pressure just lightly. I just want to create that shadow, but I don't want it to be like tone on tone. I want more. The brown, for some reason, just makes him feel a little bit warmer, as in like the tones that you see, like, you know, the leaves when they start to kind of start losing their colors in the fall. So I just, you know, just a small detail that is going to take it from being bright and sunny or springy to more of a fall tone. So I did that to all my flowers. So to all my leaves, not the flowers, but you know what I mean, the stencils. So let's see. And I'm not going heavy, I'm just going really light. Again, forgive the notifications. I'm still learning how to use this phone. I still have to find out what my passwords are. It's, it's taking forever, you know? So put all the ink away here so we don't miss anything. Gonna lift it up so you see it better. Yeah, let me take this out of the way so we don't get anything confused or dirty. My little plate over here, this has to be clean after. And the way you clean it, I know that you can run it with some alcohol. 
And then I have some here, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna show you. So no. So this is the way you will clean it. Take some, take your stencil. I have this is just alcohol. You spray on it with your towel. Just slightly clean it up. Buff it. Okay. Flip it. You can spray it again, you know, just in case. Get a bit of alcohol there. Or you can wash it on warm water, whichever way is easier, just because I'm here. I'll probably wash them after, but just to show you. And it's there, so put it over here so it gets washed. And we're ready to go. So there is a die set, there is a coordinating die, and I have it here so you see it. go you put it there i'm not gonna die cut right now because you know what might as well i have it here why not i have my machine handy so might as well let's try here and i have to uh, either change my plate or just go and you know flatten them out i saw a video by jennifer mcguire and i think i need to do that to some of my you know, my little plastic plates here. So let's be brave and cut this up. So we have the extra one just in case we decide to use that and just go with oranges. So we want to combine the pink and the orange. But I put it in the wrong side. Okay. I think last time I asked if anybody knew how to get like, you know, um, you know, this handle, you know, a little bit softer. Mine was catching and like, it looked like the gear was like really stuck. And somebody said, use soap, like a detergent, dish detergent, just a few drops and it worked. So now it's like nice and smooth when I work with it. So whoever gave me that, thank you very much. Garbage is on the floor. Ooh, 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 don't bring everything down, Natalie. It's your known to do. Okay, I think we're good. Away, so it's out of the way. Did we move it a little bit? The off center. Ooh, there we go. And we're back. For two seconds, there has flashed as of last week. So, so here's the base of my layout. And I decided to go with something that it's not white. So the color of my car stock is actually vanilla. And if you can see it, I wanted something that was going to bring the, the you know the white edge of the flowers a little bit more it looked nicer when i worked with it so like i said very simple design is cutting the borders i have my little die cutting machine here Pull the arm so we can have everything set up you can go with white it's completely up to you i just want something more like to bring the fall feeling onto the page now, what I'm gonna use this paper is, let's move the stuff out of the way so we don't get anything confused. This is from the Best Day collection. It's called Hello Fall. I love this paper, but I wanna take advantage of the diagonal lines here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting my branding bar here. Make sure it's straight. Okay. And literally, we're gonna create a diagonal design. That's literally what we're going to create. Take this away. I have my little table over here on the side. Let's see how we're going here. Literally, I'm going to trim right on the half here. Right at half. So I'm just trying to see. Uh, I don't want to. I want to try to save as much as I can out of that side of the paper. So I think I got to go this way. Yes. And it will not fit on my trimmer because I'm using the diagonal. So instead, oh, I know I love the leafy side too, my favorite. Instead, I'm gonna use an exacto knife. Uh, I'll probably just mark it with a pencil and then it do that better. And then we're just gonna freehand it. And I just ordered a ruler that is like, you know, 18 inches long. And because, you know, you need that. So we're going to, Fake it until you make it. That's the best way to describe this. Okay, so we're gonna fake it until we make it so we can get like, you know, 
straight line, like straight diagonal. It's okay if you don't go like completely like diagonal, which it might be the case here. We're gonna be, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do to cover the edge of it. So don't get stressed if you know I'm not completely at a 45 degree here. Like I said, this one just, it doesn't fit in my trimmer. And if you've been having some, um, what kind of board, the one that I have at the bottom, this one here is a Fiskars board and I think I can cut on it. Um, so, but I'm just gonna use my scissors. I don't trust, you know, having two rulers. So I'm just gonna cut it, literally. I just want half of the paper in a 45 degree angle. So a triangle. So like I said, don't get stressed. You know, if it's not a complete straight line, it'll be perfect. I would love it if it's completely straight. And like I was saying, I saw somebody last week using an 18 inch ruler, which I don't have obviously. And I ordered on Amazon. But because it's so delayed here, you know, unfortunately, uh, with, um, you see, I saved all these sides. We'll do something with them after, you know. Uh, with the flooding that happened here in Vancouver, um, uh, my husband, oh, like, works, like, in a freight company. A lot of stuff is delayed. A lot, you know. So our prayers go for, like, you know, hopefully nobody got hurt and, you know, businesses are able to survive. So this is pretty much, yes, the metal one with the, yes, I saw it and it was supposed to arrive here, uh, I think on Tuesday, but then I got a notification that it's delayed. So, you know, Amazon is good, but uh, no way you needed it. So again, back to the layout. So I have my little triangle, you see complete, you know, complete a straight um, edge. We're gonna, here's the idea. So you see it, I put stuff, I'll work a little bit ahead of time. My two photos, see, that's my daughter, that's my niece. Um, there is a year difference between them, if no more. Let me see, my daughter's gonna be 19 this year. And my, my niece just turned, yeah. So there's like around eight years apart, they're eight, seven years apart. So my idea is I wanna have them right on the center. They don't have to go straight. My lens are not gonna be here. So I work with some of these outside of the camera. And the flowers are literally gonna come down the diagonal line. Yes, I know it's really bad. I know this, um, you know, and it sounds like, you know, like it's just rain, but it's not just rain. It was quite a bit of rain. And like here in Canada, like it affected highways, it affected train, um, you know, so a lot of our mail still gets like between Vancouver and um, Ontario, which I am, I'm on, I'm gonna say mid towards the east side of Canada. A, a lot of things are delayed. Um, there's a lot of gonna be a lot of issues with food too, because you know, a lot of uh, our cattle gets uh, transported with like, you know, through rail. So I don't know, we'll see. So this is pretty much the idea. I wanna run the flowers on a diagonal line. Do you see? I think you, you get the idea right now. Yeah, so we're, we're hoping that like, you know, especially like, you know, I, not to be selfish and like, you know, Christmas is not important at this time, but like, you know, for all those people, like they live off the land, you know, we've seen images here of like the farmers trying to rescue the cows, you know, that's the livelihood. So there's a lot, you know, so let's hope that, you know, everything settles and people can like, you know, rescue, like take care of their homes and stuff like that. Cause nothing like, you know, water damage is one of the worst things that can happen to your house, to your apartment, whichever way you want to put it. Water damage is like the biggest fear I think any homeowner has, even an apartment, even though we like, you know, it's, you know, water damage is one of those things that you can, you know, it's really hard to recover from. And imagine the amount of water they can these people have to deal with, so. I might actually cut some of the flowers. Remember, I'm good and I want the flowers to work for me, not that you know, work for the die cuts. So, but that's the idea. And I want to have the two colors of the flowers. I want the pink because I have pink lines and I have yellow, but I'm going to go with more of an orangey tone just to bring that full look into the page. So, like I said, that's the idea. So, but I want to soften the edge a little bit. I think the edge is a little bit too harsh for what I have in mind. So, I did a little bit of work. Again, it's no, you know, confused things like I did last week. So 
Let me pull it up. That was good. I worked ahead. So this paper here is the Together is My Fave. And I love this side. So it was kind of, there were tears rolling down my face when I had to die cut this, but I thought it was gonna soften. This here is the Slim Lacy Edgers. So I use this one here that creates a little kind of flowery edge. So I cut two strips. These I cut, um, I die cut, not I cut. I die cut the edges. So I cut once and then I just finish that, like, you know, continuous die cuts to create my long strip, even though I'm not gonna need the entire strip. I'm just gonna need one of them. Actually, I'm gonna need two in a piece. One and a piece, what am I saying, two and a piece. So to soften the edges and give it a little bit of interest, you could, you're not gonna see a lot of it. You might see maybe the edges right at the end, maybe in between. A lot of it's gonna be hidden. You know, that's one of the cons, or most of, you can say purpose, one of the cons of like scrapbooking is that, you know, because you have to add photos and embellishments and the story, a little bit of what you add onto your page sometimes get hidden. So it's just gonna be smart or where you place things. So my idea is to soften that straight edge. I'm just gonna run this little edge at the bottom. So you have that little like lace kind of look picking from underneath. It's just a matter of, and it's not a perfect, you know, diagonal cut by all means, like, you know, when I cut this. So this is my idea. And like, you can certainly stitch through it. You know, it's completely up to you. Again, I think I've mentioned before, I have a love-hate relationship with the sewing machine. So mine is just gonna be like that, look nice and like, you know, but it's there. <laughs> yeah, so we are going to go ahead and cement it. So we know our base is gonna be there. I was thinking before that I might add a tiny little bit of color behind it just to make sure the flowers pop. I'm just gonna move it down a bit and I'm gonna use inks. Today's um, all about simple mixed media. So let's go with a little bit of that brownish tone that we have. Where's my brown brush? Is it? Yeah. Oh, this is not my brown brush. This is my brown again. This is my brown brush. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, warm buff. Remember, this is gonna sit here. My pictures are gonna go pretty much in the half here. So I just want a little halo of color, not a lot, just a little halo of color. So let's move things in place so we don't lose anything. So just a little bit of ink, start right at the center and then move out. And it's just gonna give a soft halo of color. You don't wanna accent a lot. You don't wanna go crazy with it. You just wanna create a little bit of color on the background that is gonna make everything you put on top of it just kind of pop from the page. So you think of it as creating um, the backstage for like, you know, sometimes where you wanna tell the story, sometimes you need like, you know, some color behind it. This one here just creates like, a shadow of color behind your photos, behind where you're gonna add. It's just gonna make them pop a little bit more, especially because you have that white edge around the flowers. So just to show you, see the difference between that and this, so you can see it. This pops a little bit more because it's a darker background than this here. And I don't wanna cover the entire page, just a little bit. So just like I said, think of it just like a halo around your photos. That's all you want. So just be mindful of where you're gonna put your ink. And a little bit goes a long way. You don't want it to, it, again, it's completely up to you, but just for what the look that I'm going for, again, like I said, the best way to describe it is a halo of color. Think of a color shadow behind everything that you're putting on. So here we go. That looks about right. I, I'm gonna say that I probably will add a few drops of gold ink right now. So let me just pull some gold ink for my stash because I think it's gonna need it. That will take me two seconds because I know exactly where it's at. Switch out, so give me one second. Sorry guys. I have it in low, but still show me notifications. Oh, so I'm like, I'm, alive, I'm live in, I'm in my studio. Wow, my new phone is so smart. You know? So 
I just have some gold ink. Whichever gold ink you have at hand is fine. You can even use the, it just needs a little bit of shine. So, a little bit. Just think about it. I'm going on a diagonal line. So, I'm just going to add a little bit on the background. Then, after I probably accent with some of the metallic pearls. And have you seen the new, like, have you seen all the sneaks from the new release on Monday? Oh my God. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. That's all I'm going to say. It's so pretty. I'm not part of it, but lucky the girls that are in, you know, so be ready. And I've seen the projects, the sneaks. Oh my God. Such beautiful work. So, you know, make sure it's, I think it goes Monday at 8 30, if I'm not mistaken. Well, 7 30. So I'm just going to dry a little bit of the extra liquid of the gold. Like I said, I just want a hint of gold. So I don't want the, the liquid. I just want the mica powder on the thing. So just don't rub. Just put it down, press, and lift. There we go. It's done. There you go. Go back into our thing. So we're going to start attaching this. Again, add your, um, in this case, you're just gonna use double-sided tape just to the edges, the outside edge of your um, triangle. Remember that we're gonna have to add the scallop border in here. So just be mindful of that. So, again, if you're good with the sewing machine, then go ahead and stitch it. That give you that extra texture. But you want to make sure that in this case, also what I went with something that was like not white is I wanted to create that contrast, but not that much, like, you know, and you want to have, you're going to have a lot of negative space showing. So be smart of what color, like, you know, what pattern paper you want to show and stuff like that. I love the lines. It just helps with the design, but you can easily go with like, you know, any other paper that is going to help you with like, you know, tell your story. If you go with a color picture, it's completely up to you. Again, you know, these are some ideas. And, you know, you can make them your own, but it's a fun, nice project. So all I'm going to do right now is just, you know, lift it up a bit and then just place it there. Like I said, my scallops are not completely perfect, but no, I just want, I'm just going to soften the edge a little bit. So remember, give yourself some, like, you know, you don't have to be harsh with yourself. A lot of it is going to be, no, no, it's going to be hidden, especially the part up here. So try to, when you add your scallop, be smart that the part that's going to be hidden is right underneath the photo. So you don't see like the seam. You're going to see my photos are going to be right here and the flower is going to be here. So I know the edge of the scallop, like where the one finish and the other one starts is going to be covered. So just those little things, you know, that you want to keep in mind, just make your project look a little bit like, you know, crisper in a way. Is that a word? No, I'm saying it properly. There we go. Oh, the, I'm just reading the comment. The lightest colors, the inks, yeah, the lighter colors are beautiful. Pink Fresh Studio inks are beautiful. Like if you can, you know, add it to your collection, the colors are amazing. And I think I need to put a request for the larger ink pads because I'm using a lot of them. So Heather, you might have a wish list request coming your way. So again, pair of scissors, we're going to cut the excess here. Just easier with this pair of scissors, especially because you have all those little, like, you know, edges. Try to make sure, clean it as much as I can. Don't throw that. You can use it after. When, you know, like I always said, if you see flowers that you saw in a live in one of my projects, it's because I create quite a few of them. It's, I'd rather have extras than not have enough during the project. Again, garbage can is on the floor. And then it gets all stripped away. So that's just going to soften your edge. Again, you can go ahead and stitch. I'm not going to do that because the stitching and I don't get along. That's the best way to put it. Now we're going to work on the flowers. I'm going to make sure on the flowers, on the pictures. I want to make sure that this is like, you know, it remains free. I can add my lens to journal after. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue my photo right there. So I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of glue here, just so that I can control that, you know, that I can move the card after. 
And I've sized my photos. I'm going to tell you, like, you can go with a big photo. You can go with a four by six. You can go with three by fours. Um, this actually will work with different, like, you know, multiple pictures. But this one here, I'm just going to tell you exactly what it is. This is two and two and a half, two and three quarters by three and a, three and a half. Exactly the size. And I want to make sure that you see the edges here, the colors, because those are the colors that we're going to, you know, in the collection and then the embellishments come in. So I have my one photo. Then I was thinking that this one is a little bit bigger. This is three by three and three, three and three quarters, just in case you want to know. You might not want to know, I'm just telling you, just offering extra information. Again, I'm going to put them a little bit on this land. I can put them straight, but not like them a little bit on this land. So again, oh, today's my sister's birthday. That's my phone keeps ringing. We have like a special group just for my family. And it's today's my sister's birthday and one of my little cousin's birthday at the same time. So it's like all the family because we have family all over the world. So um, it's just chiming on to like, you know, wish her a happy birthday. So that's when my phone, I don't know how to turn it off. My apologies, like I said, you know, it's a brand new phone, yay, you know? So I'm thinking I'm gonna add a little bit of that yellow just to accent a little bit more. So I'm just, again, leftover paper from another project. We're gonna make it work. Don't throw your scraps. Well, don't throw your scraps as in like when they are on a workable um, size. You know, don't, if you're keeping like little pieces, like are one by inch by one inch, then that's called just being a pad rat. But so just, you know, if there's a workable size, then go ahead, you know, save them. But, you know, can't save everything. Trust me, I have tried. Doesn't work. So super simple. I have my photos. There we go. So you see a little bit of movement, just a soft shadow on the background. I can go this way and I can go this way, whichever way you want to put them. I know I'm going to need to pop them with a little bit of foam adhesive. So let's go a little bit like that. There we go. Again, to keep them in place, turn them around. The best way to keep them together, a little bit of wash tape. You know, that way you're not going to destroy them. This washi tape is doing crazy things on me. That way you're not going to rip your photos. Nothing's going to be moved. It's not permanent until you make it completely permanent. So washi tape. I'm able to work them as if they were one single photo. So have them ready. And now we have to decide now on the color of the flowers here. Like I said, very simple design. This worked great in a card. I might have been inspired by a card that I saw somewhere. I don't remember who it was or, you know, but I saw it and I was like, oh. That would be a great like, you know, scrapbooking design. So, you know, inspiration can hit you when you least expect it or in the little list of things. And this is one of the cases. So see how pretty that is. So we're going to just play with the design a little bit. I want to get some pink at the bottom. I want to play with the two colors. I do. Again, be willing to sacrifice some of your flowers too, you know. In a perfect place, none of the flowers will get sacrificed and we can see them all. Unfortunately, you know, even though the flowers are beautiful, scrapbooking is all about the story and the photos. So you want to make sure that those are the main, you know, focus of your page. The rest is embellishing. And again, having the stencil and the stamp means that you can make them anytime you can to match the project or, the, you know, the idea that you have. So I'm just going to move it. I'm just trying to... One of the things that I want to keep is the diagonal design. So I want to make sure that I cluster most of it in this line without taking over from the borders. So I'm just playing around with some of the, until I'm happy with what it looks like. I do like that little, you know, design going into the photos. Crafters keep the, <laughs> you know what? I'm okay with you keeping your scraps. Trust me, if you see my little, I'm going to show you. So you guys know that I keep my scraps. Okay, this is my six by six and it's shameful. Okay, just okay. I keep scraps, but again, my scraps are like okay. If I have a photo, I can put it as a frame behind it. But if you keep like a scrap that is this big, it's really not worth it. So just to give you an idea, look, my six by six is well loved, but okay, I do keep mine. So you see, I like that. I like the fact that it's gonna cover the edge of this little thing here. I like that. I might cut some of these flowers. I'm not, I have no problem with it. So 
I like what that looks like. So I'm gonna just carefully move the move this and I'm gonna go ahead and glue it. And the way I'm gonna glue it is this is gonna be attached on the paper. So I got some here there. Okay, and I have foam adhesive right here. Just remember we need to give it some light. So we just go into a little bit right at the edges, just to give you the lift on some of the pieces. Let's just bring some dimension to the page. I am gonna add some foam adhesive behind the photos because I wanna make sure that they kind of pop. So, again, let's see. I know my photo's gonna be somewhere here, so I don't wanna add too much. I may, there we go. So let's see what else do you need more foam adhesive and I'm talking to myself. Trying to see what else they have here. There we go. And yeah. Yeah, you got to keep your scraps. I mean, like I said, if they're a workable size, then go ahead. But if they're like, you know, you want to keep them because the paper is beautiful and, you know, you don't want to like throw away every piece. Um, as much as I'm going to say, you know what, I love paper, throw them. <laughs> With the, with the pain in your heart, throw them. Because, you know, once you get to that point and then you're going to pull them out to work with them, you're going to realize that there's nothing you can do with that tiny little piece, especially if you scrapbook. If you're a car maker, it might be a little bit different, but I think it's pretty much the same. Okay, so let's see. We're just going to play with this one because we moved it when we moved the photo. Okay, so it's going to go right there. Give it some space. I just want to make sure to secure these two flowers before I go and add some foam adhesive behind my flowers. Okay, there you go. So instead of adding foam adhesive, I want to show you something. Okay, when you don't have foam adhesive, use chipboard, which is what we're going to use right now. Okay, add a piece. Again, put it to the size a bit smaller. Remember, you don't put Foam adhesive all the way to the edges because you want to be, want to be, what's the word? I was, you want to be able to tuck things inside, like underneath your photos. So cut your chipboard a little bit smaller than your photos. That's what I'm trying to say. And you're going to need a lot of adhesive though. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay. So, what a bit there. Just right there. It's going to give you that automatic lift. If you can see it, see that lift already? Okay, so let's just slowly kind of lift up the flowers. Again, my, my pictures are not going to be completely straight. I'm going to move them a bit. Yeah, everybody move this one. That's why what, that's what washi tape is easier because you get, are able to move it out. So I wanted to fan out a bit there. There we go. See, there's already that lift already behind. It. So let's see. Yeah, so one of the things that we're gonna add here is glue. Because you wanna make sure that the chipboard sticks to the, you know, to the cardstock. So I've been in loving this, this glue, if you, you know, are able to find it, especially the, the little tip. And you're gonna see that it's well loved. My, my glue bottles are always well loved. It's amazing. This glue works really nice, again, I'm not being paid to advertise it. I'm just saying, you know, what I'm being using lately. It's there. Again, remember, we have the little corner. We're going to tuck it underneath there. Tuck the thing. And then here, too, it's going to lift it. And that's going to cover that edge of the, the journaling bit a bit there, just to make sure that we're not completely, like, you know, crooked. Let's get it straight, like, you know. That's OK. It doesn't bug me if it bugs you. Like, as I know, there's, you know, you can use a ruler and put them side by side. Again, you can go four by six. You can go six by four. The design is very forgiving. It's just, you know, think of it. You're clustering a lot of your stuff right here. Okay. My title is going to be right here. So my title is going to be Lines of Journal can go right underneath. All I'm going to do right now is kind of elongate this a little bit more. And for that, I am actually going to use... We can go two ways and I have them here. We can go with the extra pieces of this. Just in case I brought out, this is the curvy leaves. You know, I'm not saying I'm gonna use them. I just wanna see what it looks like. I always have extra pieces um, 
cut out at the back, you know. No, I don't like it. Good. I pulled the extras, doesn't mean that I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna use all the flowers, so. But again, if Heather can link it, this is a beautiful leaf. Just in, you know, it's just the curvature that it has, it's called Curvy Leaves um, Dyson. Just perfect to create, like to help you move and add uh, movement on your page. So I'm not gonna use it. I just had it in hand just in case. Okay, so I think I'm gonna actually, see, cause I have already the peach and the pink. I need something that is gonna tie them together. So I'm gonna go with this one. And this one is the one that I created with the peach fuzz and with a little bit of passion fruit. So it has the combination of the red and the peach tone. So I think I'm gonna cut from this. Again, don't be afraid to die, like to cut your die cuts. Make them work for you. You know, you are not tied up to your images. You know, make the die cuts work for you. Know you work for the die cuts. So that's a piece of advice that I can give you. I'm pulling some foam adhesive here, just to make sure. Looking at the time, oh, we're almost finished. Don't worry, we're almost finished. So, you know, just going to. Stuck in some of this, just gonna start giving it some dimension. Perfect. <laughs> I know I'm I you know what I put a few pieces because I know that like you know you never know. Like I even though and that happens to anybody that goes live, we you know come with an idea, but sometimes things change or sometimes you know you just it doesn't gel. So we have like what I would say. And I'm sure that Heather can say the same thing, like, you know, you have at hand just in case. So I had those just in case because I knew that I wanted to create, like, you know, add that movement, but it, I'm not loving them. So I'm not going to put them, you know, you have to love your project. Like, you know, one of the things you have to love what you're creating. If you're not liking it. It's just a piece of paper. So again, I have here, I'm going to cut some of these floors. I'm not afraid to do it. So. I'm going to separate them into two pieces. So one of the things when you do this is just be mindful of where, like, you know, the die cut is at. You don't want to cut it halfway through the flower. So try to follow the edge of your, um, of the design, which is what I'm doing right now. I don't know if you can see there. You can see it. Okay, so I'm just following, like, you know, so they can work as separate pieces. And then, of course, I'm going to clean up. Well, not right now, but because it's going to drive me insane seeing those edges unfinished. I'm just gonna clean it quickly, just a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm thinking that just see if I can make it work somehow here. Just kind of stretch. I want to stretch it like in the diagonal design here. So I'm just gonna be careful when I lift it up. You see? There we go. Much much better. I might actually cut this a little. Actually, you know what? This one might have to go over here just because it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. Just think about it. When I put it this way, no, this one is going to be here. Yeah. So lift up a little bit. Remember, we don't put foam adhesive all the way, just you know, little pieces so we can tuck things in. And there we go. I'm able to tuck this in. I'm actually going to use a little bit of glue underneath. Keep it in place. And then I'm just going to lift up the edges of the die cut just to kind of look like it's tucked in underneath and don't worry if i have probably put a butterfly here that's not you know the embellishing is not going to take a lot of embellishing because you don't want to take away from the florals you already put work into this you don't want to like you know hide it and then for the part up here i am thinking that i might actually yeah let's try i lift this up a little bit there we go, lightly, I'll just put it in there, thinking about it too much, thinking about it this way, sorry if I'm talking to myself, it's just I'm trying to make sure that it goes the best way, so yep, so this one is too much, so I'm going to take this part away from here, okay, so I'm just going to see, I don't want to take over, like, you know, then I don't want it to take over the entire page. Like I said, I just want some of the leaves to peek behind it. Okay, so let's see. 
I kind of like that, but I need to trim that because it looks like it doesn't look nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of follow the edge of the die, like not the die cut, but of the design so that it looks like, you know, it was die cut that way. That's the best way that I can say. I'm just trimming this out a bit. Let's just play with the idea a little bit here. So one more. There we go. There we go. It's a little bit heavy. I don't know why it's I'm trying to think. Okay. I try to like think of proportion. Okay, I like that better. I cut this piece here. I don't know if I wanted to tuck it in. Sorry if I'm talking to myself. That's fine. Move it lightly there. Let's uh there we go. Again, a little bit. You see, just you see a little bit of that of the edge here. A little bit there. So form adhesive back here. Again, don't stress that like you know it looks like it's empty there. Don't worry. That's why like you know embellishments are for. So there we go. I'm gonna put the stuff away here. Let's put the my design is pretty much done, like my layout. So let's it's all gonna be about embellishing. So I know that I pull some stuff here on the side. And of course. I have my phone, my speakers here, and I'm just trying to see what I have to get my speakers here. And I have two. I've been going through this like a lot. The chip, the chipboard flare is beautiful. So I have another one of this that said that I think it's, I'm looking for that sticker in particular. Sorry, I just on the side here. I know I set it aside. I'm lucky to have two uh, sets of this. So I know that the other one of this, well, let's just go with it. So let's see, what would be the best title? I thought about thankful for you, but yeah. Okay. So ruler here. Let's set up the title first before we go and embellish it. It's gonna take quite a bit of space. Okay, so a T. Where are my teeth over here? Upside down. Of course not. Let's just start with the bottom. Let's start with the last letter. So build the title, start with the last letter, not with the first one. Okay, so let's find a nice L. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right here. So then you know how much space you have to play with. Okay. Yeah. Find an F. Give some a little bit of a flare just to help me with the background. So, like I said, start with your title working from you know opposite way, I guess. That way you know how much you have to move in and stuff like that. Plain K, you don't want to move. Um again, it's completely up to you, but it's nice to have the flare like next to something that doesn't have that much flare in these alphas so that you can actually see you know the movement of the letter. Trust me, I'm like spelling on my brain going, please don't mess up this part. Where's the H? Oh my God, I can't see it. I'm trying to find an H. Hope you guys are okay. Like I'm, if I'm not reading, you know, the best day possible yet, so. Yeah. Okay, and then we find a T. I don't know if any of these T's have like that little um movement. Let me see. Do I even have any more T's here? Oh, I do. We don't. It's okay. It's okay. We will do. Okay. Move it a little bit more. There we go. So we have a title. Okay. You can put four, you know. Example. Okay. Let's get to see here that we have the letters that I'm looking for. Okay. Let's pray that we have all the same color letters. I'm gonna stay within the pinks and the purples, and the, and the pinks and the oranges. This one is kind of more on the lilac, but it's okay. Let me see what I have for the Ys. Making sure that I have a U that matches perfect. 
My eye quickly scanned the letters. I think we're almost close to the end. Like I said, embellishing after you put all the flowers, you don't need much because they're going to take away from everything that you added. You want to make sure that your flowers pop, that your pictures pop. So by adding a lot of stuff, in some places you need them, in some places you don't. This one is one of the layouts, so you don't need that much more. Oh, remember, lines of journal are going to be down here. But then we need something that is going to help you drive your eye throughout the page. Okay, so we might add some more embellishments. What I have at hand, I have some of the small butterflies, but I use, remember how I said that I went dumpster diving from all the leftover uh, foil from previous projects? Because I bought the little plate, I bought the full plate. Yeah, so I can like, you know, foil back my butterflies. So I went dumpster diving, short story, you know, after they showed it, the weekend that they showed it to the design team, I was like, oh, I just threw all my foil. So they, like, you know, my family thought I was crazy, but I went and found my foil. Don't ask me where. So I'm gonna use this to, you know, help me with this. So I'm thinking that, remember, those empty spaces here, I always talk about a flow. Again, flow. And you create it with a diagonal design. You want to make sure lines of journal are going to be here. So you want to make sure that you guide it like this. Okay. So I have a few options. I don't like this pewter too dark. This, these are, I think these are blush. And I have some gold. Yeah. Uh, kind of liking the gold. I kind of like in the blush. Well, let's play with them. One's going to be here. See that empty space that I said there's no leaves here to cover? That's exactly where the butterfly is going to go. Yeah, so it's gonna be one right there. Another one is gonna be right here. Oh, and I don't have any more. No, so see again. Oh, I do have three. Oh, yeah, that's me singing. Really bad singing, by the way. But I found three, which is what I need. So a big one down here, just to have more space. Another one right here, so you remember eyes on the thing. And then you have the space up here that I remember I struggle with the. So kind of flying away. So see the movement, okay? If you want, you can add another one, but let's not be, you know, let's not, let's not cover the page with stuff that is just gonna take away from the design. So how's that? And then of course we can, you can add still more stickers and stuff like that. I might add a few more. There's one here that says BFFs. I might add it right here because they are they're really good friends they they are bffs even though they're like i said the age difference is huge but not that i want to brag about my kid but my daughter is really sweet so something about kids that just you know you know those kids that people just follow that's probably my daughter so i'm not here remember if i add something around there i have to balance it to be another one probably i'm thinking i can add my lens to journal maybe around here Love this. Probably it's gonna be. I'm just gonna tuck it in a little bit here, and you're gonna need a third one because remember, rule of threes. You need to have three. So let me just see one that kind of has the same colors that I'm going for. Maybe over here again. Just kind of no. This is too big. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go with this new home. Just gonna tuck it in there. Mm, I don't like it. I might actually move this one down here a bit more. Move it down here. Much better. I like them. Yeah, that one it balances out. Over here. Yeah, over here. Probably, probably like that. Mm, I don't like this here. See how the struggles are real sometimes. I don't know if I want to put it. No, no. Over here. There we go. I'm just going to tuck it in right there. And there you go away from the you know embellishments because i'm over gonna do it but that's about it i like i said before i might come in with some metallic pearls after you don't want to see me do them because if you see me before you know that i struggle moving them and glue them but i think it needs some um, of the metallic um not ink i'm gonna go with the metallic pearls i'm gonna show them to you so you know what i'm talking about i have them here i put everything in place so but i don't want to um you know, take forever either. So I think we've gone over an hour. So remember, lines of journal, 
I'm gonna add some comments here, but I'm gonna add a few lines here because you know, I don't know who's you know which album is gonna go with my daughters or my nieces, which album this uh, layout is gonna go into. So I'm gonna leave it for them to write anything. I'm gonna just add the date, you know, what the picture was taken and stuff like that down here, and then they can add their stuff, you know, after. Okay, but slide over here. Just a little bit of movement. There we go. And I think we are about it. And then I'm going to bring, like I said, some of the metallic gold pearls right here, just because I want to match that gold that I have some. So I probably put them around the butterflies. But just so you see them, I'm not going to glue them. I'm just going to put them here so you see them. So, you know, and I'm sure Heather is about to pick some a winner. We're pretty much done. I'm just going to flip the camera to see you a little bit longer. And then, of course, my phone is dying. Because, like I said, oh, you see, I don't know which, how to work this phone yet. So my apologies on that. If you see me, like, you know, struggling with my phone, it's not, not getting the hint of it yet. Oh, you see, I'll learn. I promise I have to learn how to use this phone. Well, I have to learn how to use the phone regardless so just i think they'll go like over here think of it like trails for the butterflies that's the way i'm setting them up and that's about it i might add a little bit i need something else here so we'll find something after but that's about it for today for the project i hope you actually have enjoyed this clean up a little bit before i turn the camera i know that heather is going to find a winner soon yeah, the butterflies are beautiful. If you can get a hold of them, I think they are in reorder, but it's a beautiful investment and they actually create, like, you know, you can create quite a few of them at once, especially if you scrapbook. It's a great, um, you know, thing to have at hand. I'm just cleaning all the mess that I have here before I flip the camera and I can see you. And I'm going to give some time for Heather also to pick a winner. Again, like I said, I'm might add like another sticker up here just to fill up the space but the bulk of the layout is done again you know even though i added the edge in it's just because you're going to see a peak of it at the top and at the bottom it's just going to soften that edge but think of it you just want to take advantage of your diagonal line and leave everything else kind of clear so that everything the focus is right here okay so I'm going to sit down to see you and I'm going to flip the camera. I'm going to leave it there so you see it for a little bit longer. And then I'm going to flip the camera so I can see your face. And there you go. You have a winner. It's Jennifer Flaco. Flaco. Let's see. Ooh, my sweat is off right now. But I hope you liked it. As always, I have my drink here because I'm thirsty right now. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Leave me a message. I'd love to read it. Um, don't forget, if you are actually, there's a sale going on in the Pink Fresh Studio shop. All the past, uh, not the past, but there's some um, holiday stamps and dice um, that are on sale, 35% uh, off. So take advantage of that, especially if you're look, looking forward to create cars or projects. Good time to pick those up. As always, um, you know, Jennifer gave um, Leah a few days, you know, before you ask for your price. You have a couple of days. She might take a little bit longer. So for now, and as always, thank you so much for joining me. I think I'll see you in a couple of weeks and we'll go full into Christmas. So pull out your, you know, your holiday magic collection. We're going to use that. Um, let me know what you want to see. You want to see a layout? We'll do a layout. You want to see more of a, a December daily kind of documented? Let me know because that's pretty much what I'll be going into. And don't forget that on Monday, the new release goes live at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is where I'm in. And there's a few basics and they're, they're beautiful. As always, everything's so beautiful. Um, thank you so much, Heather, for helping. And um, you know, thank you all of you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure. And I hope to see you, like I said, next time we'll see each other will be like, you know, after the Thanksgiving holiday for the US um, followers and we'll be all in Christmas mode. So we'll see you there and, you know, bring your holiday magic. I won't be wearing anything crazy because, you know, I wear a lot of black, but we'll do something colorful. Let me know. You want to do a layout? We can do a mini book, like, you know, 
maybe we'll you know do something fun and create a mini book we'll see but you know i'll see you guys take care so let me see i gotta get the end button and look like you know look nice doing it so take care guys